This is actually part two of a three-part series on the question, how could my neck be causing a symptom or a disease when I don't have neck pain? You know, it's a really good question. Part one was when I talked about how neck problems can obstruct the internal jugular vein or can block cerebral spinal fluid flow. So I believe that the most common cause of intracranial hypertension is ligamentous cervical instability. So the ligamentous cervical instability ultimately leads to changes in the architecture of the bones where the cerebral spinal fluid gets slowed or blocked in the neck so that can raise brain pressure or the neck structure can change which I call cervical destructure and that can block the jugular veins especially when a person's sleeping. So anybody who wakes up or they lay down and their symptoms aren't any better they probably have cervical destructure. So even when they're laying down the brain can't drain normally so then they get a lot of symptoms. The second reason that a person can have awful symptoms, they could have heart arrhythmias. I currently have a friend of mine who's struggling so horribly because they have bigeminy and all these PVCs and they have a pericardial effusion and the cardiologist has done a lot of things but they can't seem to help him. So eventually I talked him into coming here and sure enough he has all kinds of vagus nerve degeneration, all kinds of problems in his neck because for years he's been having to write all these reports and he's had to do a lot of stuff on the computer. And personally, I think the, his vagus nerve is a large part of what's going on with his current condition. So today we're gonna to talk about, you could have a severe vagus nerve problem, vagus nerve degeneration, not even know it, and it's coming from your neck. So this is just in-house data. This is on something like 138 patients, the normal vagus nerve diameter. That's ultrasound, high resolution ultrasound. That's the vagus nerve, you know, carotid artery. The average of the 138, this is, you know, consecutive new patients who came to the Hauser Neck Center. It was 1.2 extreme less than 1.2 is 47 percent of people so what i'm saying is extreme it means that the 47 percent of the new patients that come to caring medical they've lost one third of their vagus neurons so the vagus nerve only has a hundred thousand nerve cells in the vagus nerve where the brain has anywhere from one to five billion. The enteric nervous system in the digestive tract has something like 500 million, but the vagus nerve, which runs right along the anterior cervical vertebrae, that only has 100,000. So you can't kill a whole bunch of those and think like nothing's gonna happen. The three things that can injure the vagus nerve is misalignments. This is cervical destructure. We're seeing this more and more where the person has lost, you know, they've lost the normal cervical curve and the cervical curves are like this. And the kids that come to the office, the 14 year olds, the 15 year olds, the 17 year olds, you know, the teenagers, their curves are terrible. So if you have a teenager and they're having all kinds of health issues, they're kind of crazy. They can't problem solve, they can't think right. Their personality has changed, that's a key one. They probably have a very dysfunctional cervical curve that's just screwing up the brain pressure, the fluid flow into and out of the brain. And of course, the vagus nerve is what? the vagus nerve calms the body down. So in other words, there's a right vagus nerve, a left vagus nerve, and when the vagus nerve is stimulated, you feel peacefulness, you feel love, you feel calmness, your breathing is slow, the, you can handle a lot of stress, and when you get vagus nerve degeneration, that process is inhibited. So in other words, the person can't calm down so of course they have rage they have anxiety they're very quick tempered 
their heart rate goes up, like they're always under stress. You know, it's, it's one issue after the other issue. And one of the things that happens when you are hunched over a cell phone all day is you get ligament injury. So in other words, when you bend forward, the vertebrae go like this. You know, so that's a, these are scans, digital motion x-ray, so that's how we document the various problems in the neck. We do scanning where somebody's upright, so the two kinds of scans we do in the office are digital motion x-ray where we're moving the neck, because you can't find instability or looseness unless you're upright typically and you're moving the neck, and then of course a cone beam CT scan, which gives us a three-dimensional image. These are the various vagus nerve branches, and you'll see that when the bronchial branch is affected of the vagus nerve, you can get shortness of breath, asthma, bronchitis. When the cardiac branch of the vagus nerve is affected, you get heart arrhythmia, tachycardia, even cardiomyopathy. When the auricular branch, you get ear pain, ear sensitivity. When the branches to the stomach get affected, you get gastroparesis. You can't make normal amounts of hydrochloric acid. You might even get pyloric stenosis because the pyloric valve can't open. And then these are the other branches. When the pharyngeal branch is affected, you get ear pressure. You can get swallowing difficulties, dizziness. You get eustachian tube dysfunction. Well, I'm seeing more and more recurrent laryngeal branch, uh, recurrent laryngeal branch nerve problems. The, yesterday, I had two patients. I just asked them, hey, has your voice changed? And th they, these were new patients, and they said, the wives especially said, oh my gosh, he used to be such a good singer, he can't sing anymore. Uh, so the recurrent laryngeal nerve, that's what innervates the vocal cords. So the only way I can speak normally uh, and I can sing, you know, I, I'm monotone, so you won't, want to let, you won't want me to sing for you. La, 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 it's just terrible. So, but apparently, if I make a joyful noise to the Lord, to the Lord, it's good when I'm at church. But the people around me, I'm not sure it's a joyful noise. But they both said they just can't sing anymore. So if you've noticed a change in your voice quality, or you can't sing anymore, or you just get hoarse easier, you all of a sudden you feel like you can't breathe. Because remember, the vocal cords have to be open for you to breathe. So the nerve supply to the vocal cords, it's the vagus nerve. Like the vagus nerve is pretty much the sole nerve supply to the vocal cords. So if your vocal cords all of a sudden they shut, you're like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. That's a sign that you have vagus nerve degeneration, which is very serious and you have to get, you know, you have to get it checked out. And this is a very busy slide, but when you have upper cervical instability, you can get compression of the nodose ganglion. The DNA of the vagus nerve sits right in front of the atlas, which is C1. The vagus nerves, to get into the brain, this is the shortest distance when you have the normal cervical curve. If, you, if your curve now is straight, now all of a sudden you can see all the slack here. So basically, the, this is the shortest distance, this is the longest distance. Like that's the longest distance. So the longest distance, that's gonna stretch your vagus nerve. And I just call it compression stretch. So if the atlas is forward and the, the curve is elongated, the vagus nerve to get into the brain, instead of like a direct shot, it has to go here, then here, then out there. So it gets kinked right at C1. That's right where the nodose ganglion is. So you destroy the DNA of the genetic code of the vagus nerve and that can just wreak havoc. And the vagus nerves are the main sensors of the human body that tell the brain what's going on in all the internal organs. How can your lungs function normally if the brain isn't getting the right information about what's going on in the lungs? Because the vagus nerve is what innervates the lungs. So a kid, a young person who has hyperactive airway, so let's just say they have asthma, then the, they have vagus nerve issues. The, uh, so in other words, like they might, uh, there might be a little bit of pollen in the air, right? There's a little bit of pollen, okay? You gotta realize everybody in the house is getting the same amount of pollen. So why does this kid 
he, they got to get allergy shots. They got to take antihistamines. They got to take bronchodilators. Like, why? We're all getting the same amount of pollen. You know what I mean? So the problem probably is, is that child probably, assuming that they eat like everybody else in the house and everything else is the same, you know, so they probably have a structural problem in their neck and their vagus nerves aren't working correctly. So they're get, so in other words, the, the brain isn't getting the right information about the pollen and it overreacts to the pollen and then they get asthma and all kinds of things. So you can see here when you get compression or injury of the vagus nerve here, it causes all these things. It can cause Bell's palsy, heart, lung disease, even atherosclerosis, gastroparesis, pyloric stenosis, light sensitivity, hoarseness, trigeminal neuralgia, anxiety, you know, just all kinds of things. So this just shows the vagus nerve and it innervates all the digestive tracts. So if you have your gallbladder is not working right, your pancreas isn't working right, your large intestine, small intestine, please get your vagus nerve uh, looked at. Now, if you go from a healthy nerve to neuropathy, neuropathy means damage of a nerve, you can, in the process of that, you can have where the nerve just fires. So there is a thing called vagal neuralgia, meaning that a person has unbelievable like ear pain or throat pain. And that can just be that the nerve is firing excessively. The nerve obviously can get inflamed. And if there's too much pressure or force on the nerve, eventually the nerve's gonna get damaged. Now the good news is the treatment is very successful. So if a person has cervical disc structure, then the first step is the person needs to do curve correction. So that starts with proper sleeping position, uh, proper setup for their computer. And then in the office here, we do a thing called curve correction. So we, under x-ray, we put different weights on them. If there's misalignments that are injuring the vagus nerve um, on one side, then we do an adjustment. And of course, if there's instability, if there's instability, that's related to the vagus nerve degeneration, then some prolotherapy to the upper cervical area then can resolve that. So once the person has good alignment, their cervical curve is reasonable and their stability is reasonable, often we'll see the vagus nerves then regenerate, they get bigger, they start functioning better. I should say before I leave this, you can measure your own vagus nerve activity or balance in the nervous system by heart rate variability. So I have done videos on heart rate variability, so I'd encourage you to just look at those and that's the method that we recommend people do when they wanna actually monitor their own vagus nerve uh, health.